we're gonna start on rank to GM with Muxi. Why Muxi? Because I think that she is a staple of the support class. I think that every support player needs to know how to play Muxi. She has been played in variable metas across time and is a viable pick even at higher ratings all the time. So this is why like, I decided to do this guide on Muxi. She's one of those heroes that people go like, she's very easy to play, but when you start playing her, you start panicking and you don't know when to go for a guess, you don't know when to Valk, you don't know when to get in cover, and more importantly, you don't know how to use her GA effectively. So, let's get this started. Stop the anyway, what the fuck? They know chat! Poor guy said. Backing up. While getting the widow. I need to dodge. This is what I need to keep an eye out for chat. Dodge the pool. Because if the pool goes through, who goes through as well? Also dodge Doom for punch, so I'm going to try to just the jump. We'll try to like turn high on a little bit. They don't have anything that can one shot me from a long distance. They should be safe. Doom is a huge counter to Bop, so I'm going to try and take care of Bop a little bit more. I have the lamp. Cooldowns went through. Bob, uh, Brick can stun me, but I kept my distance and I realized that yesterday. Like, we talked about it yesterday and now we effectively did it. Trying to get out over here. We're gonna lose the point. But... Get out, get out, get out. Oof. We can pull Diva Bomb after the door closes. Hook me, hook me. No. Punch me, punch me. I don't want you to go on my teammates. Good. Doom 1. Doom 1 HP when he drops. I can't get anything done there. Get the fuck out. Oh, he's still kiting. Still trying to survive. Get out, Bob! Friendly healer! Careful about hook. Oh my god, that's huge that he actually got up. We're 4v4 if you push now. There's like, we got two picks. Ugly. We're 4v3, go point. Do you have lamp? Never mind. Keep it, keep it. He still didn't have his cooldowns up because I remember 4 seconds, 6 seconds, 6 seconds. I'm gonna stay with my DPS's because my buff's going to take care of my tanks. I don't have rest yet. Damage boosting the Widow. Using buff's jump to reposition myself over here. She missed the hook. Damage boosting her a little bit. I'm not gonna have rest yet. I need to take care of my buff because if my buff's safe, my tanks are safe as well. I can't touch that to get out. Buck behind, and then we will die. Oh, you said if you if you want Bob second healer, yeah. That's good. I need to talk a bit. What the fuck? Oh my god. Do you have lamp? I'm gonna get a guess like this. See, I learned! Use my environment, get a guess off. Can we bongo? Use bongo? Stabilize on the team fight. Dodge the punches. So I'm using my high gun mobility, my Valk mobility, to shift mobility to like dodge the punches. Nice. I wanna go with me on high ground. Actually, wanna take their attention. Change my mind. We can pull hook above the shield non-stop. They don't do it, we can do it. Nice hook. No mock. See that my team responds to callouts? I'm going to keep calling out for them. Careful about Widow shooting me. Oh, that is a huge cross fog. Come get me. Thank you. You can shoot me, so I'm careful about it. 
We can pull dragon, pull dragon, pull dragon, pull dragon then. Dragon first then pull. Kind of risky staying there, but he's contesting the point. Fog left, fog left, on you, Ogisa. Is your hook. So close, 1 minute 48 though. I was thinking about guessing the Orisa, but Hog had hook, shield was very low, he would just shoot the shield and destroy it. I told you like today, I'm working on, I get the guess, I get out. That's all I care about. Get the guess, get out. Yesterday I would have probably went for the guess. I would have guessed the Orisa, probably, but I would have died. So I get the guess and get out. That's all I care today. And of course, take care of my second healer, which I am doing constantly. Like I am doing. Where is the music fam? There's never music when uh, we're doing an rank 2 GM. Bob can take care of my tank so I'm, and my Bastion, so I'm going to go with Widow over here. Damage boosting a Widow in the beginning is more important than damage boosting a Bastion until he sets up on payload because Widow has, like, you increase her damage. He instantly deletes a tank with a headshot, almost instantly. So this is like why you want to do this. Somebody top right. When there are shields in front though, I'm going to damage boost the Bastion. Or when there are people. I want to be careful while I'm getting hooked. So I'm playing in the back. Reaper still right side behind. Oh, I still got a kill. I got another kill. Hog is over there. Only Hog can do something to me and Anna can sleep me obviously, but I keep you my distance. If I see the Ogisa shield, I'm going to damage boost the Bastion to destroy the shield fast. Continue damage boosting the Bastion. Staying with the Widow. Staying in the back. They have Junkrat and Reaper. Damage boosting the Widow from this distance. If there are people in front of me, like a lot of people, I'm just going to damage boost the Bastion. See, shield gets placed, damage boost the Bastion, because his priority is going to be to like destroy the shields. And then when people are grouped, I'm going to damage boost the Widow. Now I want to swap and focus them up. Damage boosting the Bastion from this distance. I should still be quite safe. He should be able to like clean everybody, although we're quite low. Rotating over here. I can't get the rest off. But I think I think I can get the C9. Get out, get out. Maybe they're gonna forget about me. On my window. We need to keep the payload moving. They're leaving. At some point, I can fly to my teammates in case I'm in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting to see if people are leaving payload. We picked up, right? How many alive? Before we fog, I might be able to like, get a pick. I'm gonna try and contest Diana. Or I'm gonna contest the buff. I'm gonna get hooked. No lamp. No reason in even destroying the lamp because my Valor's gonna finish. You can just use buff sword. Reaper TP behind, Reaper TP behind us. Reaper on you, Bastion. Damage boost him because he's anti. Gonna hide. I guess the Bastion gets more damage instead of the healer. Like we wanna like cap the point. Extra damage is better. 
damage boosting him. We have Bongo and up. I don't want to get hooked. So I'm maintaining my distance. Quick was behind. And Bastion popped off with Bongo and damage boost. A lot of people don't know when like you first start playing the game, you think that damage boosts don't stack. Like as in Ogisa's Bongo, Morris's damage boost, Nano, Discord Org but being applied to a target, but they do stack. So like a damage boosted Bongo Bongoed up like Bastion is just going to melt people. There's no reason for me to stay here, here actually. I'm going to get my Valk. Death Hog, I have Sigma now. Death Widow. I'm going to win the because there's a lot of damage going on. I'm losing the Bastion. That lamp is very good, they can't destroy it. They destroyed it now because like they were pushing in. Go to the left side. Gripper TP behind top left. Good, destroyed him. Call out Gripper TPs. The damage was just gonna melt everybody. Good window. Staying with Widow because she's like going all the way in the back, helping her destroy the lamp. So she can try and kill somebody. Now I need, just need to heal her up. I'm going to get out. Flying to the Diva. And to the Widow. Anna's oh, still underneath. By the way, when you fly, a lot of people like see the beam goes like extra long because the beam connection breaks after two seconds. Like, look, one, two, now it breaks. So, like, even if you fly far away from them and it feels like you're out of range, just maintain the beam connected if you don't have anybody else to kill that. Is. Can't do anything to us. Like right now, I'm not under any pressure from the enemy because they want to contest the widow, not me. She's gonna wall me, so like I knew that. I'm going to use my valve to get high ground so that wheel doesn't go after me. Kill up the bastion. Try to get the diva. Can't get her up though. Out. I got the bastion. The elevation ended. Now I can't do anything. We gotta kill him to bap though. Damage boosting the diva because maybe she can get back in mech before she gets away. She can't get away. So I'm over there. I'm gonna fade. Fuck has the correct choice in this. Because like they don't have anything for her apart from Bob. Nice. I'm swapping my target from like either staying with Widow to like staying with my uh, Faga. Yep, soldier. Sigma guys, I killed the Sigma guys side. Can you bongo? We need bongo now. That goes to. Walk in front of to like block some damage, Valking just to make sure that we're going to have the point. Trying to get the Ash over here. Good. Some damage boost the Widow in the beginning, maybe she gets a pick and then I'm gonna stay with Faga. That's a huge pick on Togisa. Faga, Faga, let's go left, let's go left, Faga. Take it easy, don't poke, don't poke. I need hills, right side, right side. Stop. Guys, come on, give me a jump. Multiple angle of attack. Go in, go in, go in. Because, like, if Aga shoots the shield, she, we're all shooting the shield, but if, like, we go, some people left, some people right, we just sandwich them. Like, if we all shoot here, it's like one here, one here. If you, like, go left and right, then they're gonna be sandwiched, so to say. Yeah, 
Die war die MDF, mein Schulz. Die MDF, die MDF. Wo ist der Tor? Fuck, I'm gonna keep my guess. I'm gonna keep my guess because like we have close spawn. Half window, half window almost. Amplification, Moving the payload. Falling behind. Yeah. Damage boosting. Do you want any mortality, Widow? Ah, fuck it. Save it. Keep it for Sigma. The second you have wolves, just press Q. We need to win this point. We need window, we need window. Can you pull Diva Bomb? Pull Diva Bomb, can you pull? Sigma left. Can you Diva Bomb? Sigma behind, Sigma behind, kill the Sigma behind, Sigma behind. Sigma behind, everybody on Sigma. We're the top left, we're the top left. Keep it, keep it, keep it. That's so huge, guys. Did they use my ult? Uh, no. I don't think. Okay, okay. Well, I guess I never leave payload. Let's play Vega Gusta so far, I don't have anything. Can you window this fight? Use bop window fucks. Then I'm gonna valve. Fuck up a guys right after we break them. We break the shoes. Fog left, fog no hook. The only point, the only point. I'm gonna watch that thing replay and see what I could have done better. Very good push though. Very, very, very good. I wanted to like spawn hold, but. Don't left, don't left. I'm back. Never make it. Hog left looking for a hook. Fucker gonna fly up right after. Yeah, Vash McQueen. Can you bong up? Damage 
She wants the bagage, so I'm not giving away her position. GG. Well played. I'm going to give you the vote from my perspective, chat. I'm not gonna give you it from the perspective of the enemy what they could have done. I'm gonna give you it strictly on myself because this is a series dedicated to learning mercy, not to learning how to play the game better as a team or ranked better. So, again, let's start. Uh, we play with Farah Mercy. Is this the first defense? I didn't even remember that we had. No, we don't have Farah Mercy, never mind. Uh, we have a Mickey that's AFK. Okay, let's go from my point of view. Sound is very important in Overwatch, and a lot of people just ignore the sound completely. So, in the beginning, heroes have certain footsteps. Listen to Hawk's footsteps to the right. You heard that? Dum, 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 dum. That's Hog waiting over there with a hook. Okay? So always like try and envision in your head where the enemies are or your allies are based on the sounds they're making, including with their footsteps. So I call that out, get sucked, fly there, kill the Sigma. Up. At 15 seconds in, you can see the enemy team comp. The enemy is not running with the sniper, so I'm safe staying more in the open as long as I maintain my distance from the Orisa pool. You should never get pulled. And from the hog hook. You should never get hooked, so you need to understand the range that it has. And that comes with a lot of experience. Never get stunned by Brig. Never get punched by Doomfist. So if he charges the punch, you can like... This is like a cool trick you can do as Mercy against Doomfist. When he punches, like he punches over here, he can't punch you on high ground. So technically, if you always play like from high ground, he can never get to you. He needs to uppercut or seismic slam from the same level or from a higher level. He's going to uppercut to you and then seismic slam, but then you can Valk out. But in this case, like although a lot of people go like, yeah, bro, but you told me to stay in the open. My friend, okay, I tell you to stay in the open. But a lot of people, you know what they do? They like stay right over here in the open. If... They, if I say that they don't have any snipers or anything that can one-shot you a long distance, a lot of people don't understand that that doesn't mean that they can't kill you. They will kill you if you stay in the open. What I mean by this is I can try and pick around corners more forgivable because in case I get damaged by Soldier or Ana or Orisa or Hog or Doomfist for that matter or even Briggs gonna throw her mace at me, I can get into cover because a lot of you probably just go like, yeah, so... ML7 said that they don't have anything that can keep me from this distance, but one shot me from this distance, so I'm gonna play uh, right over here in the middle. Like over here. No, 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 no. The second you start taking damage, you need to have like a backup plan. A shield, a tank that's going to take damage for you, or a wall. Okay? So it's very interesting to know, know this. Because like a lot of people just completely ignore things like this or or like it's like this you either have a shield tank or a tank or something that is somebody that is going to like tank the damage for you in case you're going to get low or b you have a wall that you can hide around like you see i'm playing kind of in open space but i have like this wall as cover in case i'm going to be low or third option you play so far away that even if the soldier hits you it's like uh, raindrops like he's not going to he's just going to scratch you so you can get into cover before he can kill you so, I'm just playing the back, doing the super jump because I don't want to get punched by Doomfist because he was charging his punch here, so he was looking for a punch here. So that's like I, why I did the super jump to reposition myself. Fly to the Widow, be safe because Bob can keep up my tank's life because he offers mass healing if you play with a Zen or even with a Brig in case Brig is playing... Uh, doesn't feel safe enough to trigger her passive, then you kind of like want to play closer to your team. But in case like if you have a Nana, a Moira, or a Bob, they can keep your team alive quite easily because like they have mass healings and mass AOE healings. Apart from Zen that has mass healing, uh, apart from like Ana that has mass healing like with her grenade. But Bob can heal multiple people at once. Moira also. If you have a Zen, be more wary of your tanks. So I fly over here, staying cover damage with the Widow, maybe she gets a pick. And remember what I talked about you yesterday, chat. I was always thinking, today I'm going to focus on getting reses. So I'm always thinking, what can stop my res? I know that I have the lamp here, Hog used the hook to kill the McCree, because I heard the hook earlier. And I have the lamp here. So I walk in and I told you there are like 
Three windows of opportunity with rest. One insta rest. The second somebody dies, you go in for a rest. You don't wait because they are probably going to be unaware that you're going in for an insta rest and they're not going to react to it. Because like sometimes, you know when you kill somebody and then you go like, uh, camp the rest? Well, that takes a second. Maybe you got the rest off meanwhile, like you started it beforehand. Second option. You can go for a sneaky rest. After nobody's nearby, go for a rest. Third option. You can go for like a rest during when people are want to do something to you, but ask for resources, ask for DM, ask for lamp, ask for other things like that. But whenever you do it, make sure you don't want to get stunned. So me, compared to yesterday, yesterday I would probably uh, would have fly would have like flew over here if that's a word. What the fuck's my crease face though? Okay. So I fly here and I start the rest at the edge of it. And then walk over here for cover, because I remember that Brick can stun me, okay? So I don't want Brick to stun me, because if I would have started my rest here, this was like very easy stun distance. But I start my rest over here, so even if Brick wants to start and stun me, I'm not, I didn't hear her cooldown, I'll be honest, like I didn't hear her cooldown, I don't know if she has shield bash or not. Or even whip flail, although I saw it in replay, when I was playing I wasn't aware of that, I was just aware that Hog used hook and Nana can't see me because she's in the back. So like Brick has stun. Two stuns to like interrupt me from rest. So I'm keeping my distance from her and using this as cover. So like see, I learned. And now look at the stun going through. So like I literally got the rest off here. And then I had an escape route right after I got the rest straight to the widow. So I reacted instantly. Now. Dodge the Doomfist. This is like just running around in circles. Healing up the diva, nothing interesting. Here we lose the point. My water is not boiling, it's the fucking washing machine that is, is trying to take off. I'm sorry. Stay behind. I don't like like how I'm playing over here. Like I feel like I'm still way too close to my team, by the way. Because like I can maintain a bigger distance. I feel like I'm too close. Stay in the back, try to dodge the hook. Right now I wanted to be a little bit slippery. This could have costed me my life. I wanted to practice the super jump so I can like go over here, but I fucked it up and I was in the open. I could instantly get slipped or hooked. So that was very bad from my side. I get pulled, I have Valk anyway to get out. Go over here and now see Doomfist. Trying to contest me. So I, what do I do is I want to debate him. I go to his punch range. So like he's going to waste his time trying to punch me. But then I'm going to like fly up to waste his time. Because like meanwhile Doomfist would, was like thinking that he can like try to get a punch onto me. So like this is a debate that you can do with your Valkyrie. Let me show you again. It's about wasting the time of your enemy. So. I use the Valk. Get out. Now I go over here. I see the Doomfist. And then I want to debate him, look right side in case somebody's low. I go over here down and then I go straight up. So like if he punches me, he's going to miss the punch. He goes in, doesn't get the punch for anything and then decides to go for McCree. I know he's going to go for McCree so I start to pocket him instantly. Should have damage boosted the flashbang then swap to healing when the impact went through. And then damage boost him while Doomfist was stunned but I, I'm still learning. Okay, keep the heal on him. Try and go for a rest over there. I realize that I can't get the rest off because there's a brig waiting over there and she can stun me. So I continue here. Kill up the Orisa, dodge the pool. You can try, by the way, a lot of people don't know. You can actually heal people through this. Wait. Through this hole, you can actually heal people with every healer. Through this and through this. And of course underneath. So I was trying to connect my beam with Orisa over here, but I didn't get it. Now I'm trying to search for escape routes. I want to do the super jump, I would have died again, but still trial and error. Putting myself in risky scenarios like this is like, like a lot of people just try and do super jumps, for, exa for example, when there's no threat nearby. But when there are like high stress environments that you really need to do, you're going to panic. So what I, what I tend to do is I tend to like create those high stress environments by putting myself in absolutely prepared positions to like think if I'm going to fuck it up, I'm going to die. Luckily, I didn't die two times when I did it, but... Yeah, jump to the widow over here. We got like some picks, cause like Hog died, Brick died, so like they're four people. Right now I know that we're three people here, 
one, two, three. They're only four, one, two, three, four. But we have closer spawn than them because the spawn is over here and the payload is pushed over here. So the longer the fight, the better it is for us because like we have complete time to regroup ourselves. Heal up the bop. He's trying to get out. He got out. Heal up the widow. And now to see in comparison, like look what I mean with this. We're five people here. This dude respond and look where where Hog is. So like we're gonna win the fight if we engage right now. I call out for the engage. They get a nade. We get another kill. Now I was thinking, should I go and rest the uh, rest the widow? But then I remembered he used uppercut, he used fist. So there's no way he can get to me because he can't say snake slam because he dropped. So I decided to go for a rest. And exactly what I said. He's now up here. Because like let's look at Doomfist's cooldowns. So he's waiting. Up. Punch. Gets out. And see my window of opportunity. I have 3 seconds window of opportunity. I start the rest. Cooldowns are back up. But I get the rest. And get out. He even if he would have like charged the punch here, I think he wouldn't have killed me. Like the impact, because like he didn't kill me. And Bob could have healed me. He didn't have like enough time. In hindsight, I should have like instantly just went for the rest. But I was not accustomed. I'm still not accustomed, so it's gonna take some time. Don't fully understand the limits of the hero. Bob is going to take care of the tanks. I need to take care of the DPSs, so I'm going with them. Damage killing up the widow, so she's full damage boosting the widow. Using Bop over here as an anchor point to like jump. Try to go to the widow. Damage booster. Because like Doomfist is, was over there trying to be on me. Killing up the Bop. I wanna try and touch the point again. Wanna try and take use the widow as an anchor. I go over there. Who goes through and eventually I die. Now, a rest that I'm very proud of. Ho gets a hook, when Ho gets a hook, instantly swap to damage boost and then swap back to healing, I'll show you again, so like amplify the damage of his hit, heal first, then damage, because maybe he like gets damage, like there's no point in doing damage boost the second he gets the hook, because so, when, hook, when Hulk gets the hook, he's going to be damaged or not take any damage, but he can't do any damage, so you want to damage boost him after the hook ends, like when the target is over here, like the distance that it takes for the target to reach Hog's pellets is um, should be covered by healing and then swapping to damage when uh, he like connects the hook. I damage boost him over here. Orisa dies. And now I'm very proud of myself. I pop Valk and I'm thinking. They have sleep. They The Hog dies so he has no hook but they have sleep dart. They have Doomfist and they have Brig. So I realized I need to use the environment to get the rest off. So what I do is I ask for lamp, but then I realize I don't even need lamp. Doomfist is over here, and I'm thinking, bro, he can fist me. But if I start the rest over here, wait, I'm gonna fly over here, try to hesitate with the rest a bit. Because I was thinking, I still didn't react instantly. If I go in, and I start the rest here, he can fist me. If I go over here, he needs to like use his punch and then uppercut me and I don't think he's gonna cancel the rest anyway because like when he's gonna uppercut me I'm gonna go down and try to cancel his movement a little bit and also like he's going to die because he's not going to have he's going to have his seismic slam and he's probably going to be like very low for my teammates over here and Hulk can hook him because he probably has hook back up again he has it okay so like I go in and I use the environment let's ignore the Doomfist because I'm literally proud of the fact that I saw the brick here that she can't start me but I realized that maybe Anna has sleep dark does she have sleep dark Let's see. Yeah, she has sleep dart. So when I go in for a guess, I stack the guess and I crouch down so that Anna has no way of sleeping me. Like you see, like I'm hiding over here using this as cover. I get the guess off and then I climb back up. I also ask for the lamp. See, I was outside of Doomfist's range. So uh, he realized like a bit late I was going in for a guess and also had lamp in case he contested me and I would have died. But still, I'm very proud of myself that I was able to like use the environment and understand what can stop me from that distance. Making high noons, I'm gonna damage boost him a little bit. We win this team fight, I think. Actually, no. Just literally go back to my teammates. Hanzo was shooting the Doomfist damage with the Hanzo. Do the super jump over here. I initially wanted to go over here. The reason why I want to do like movements like this is because I want to take their attention. I'm not going to like do anything by me going to this side, but I'm going to take away resources from them because.
Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> so, if I fly over here, maybe Anna looks at me and does one shot. Maybe Anna looks at me and does one shot, or maybe Soldier looks at me and I take uh, his attention. Like, that was the purpose over here. But I don't want to go fully all the way there, because that's a very easy sleep duck to pull off. So, just fly there, swap around, fly back to my McCree. Let me swap the sound on. Oh, gets the hook, damage boost. I'm maintaining the distance compared from yesterday, pulling out the pistol just to increase my mercy damage stats. Heal up everybody, win this fight. Hog gets hooked over there. I wanna try to get to Hog. He uses his ult to push everybody away. I fly to Hog over here. The reason why I fly to Hog over here is because like even if Brick starts contesting me, I'm not gonna die. I'm, if she's going to use all her abilities to like try and contest me, then I'm going to be able to fly back to Bob. And second to that, I have my like lamp here. Because if I don't fly to Hog in this case, Brick is probably going to try and flail him off the map. I think he can. I think like Brick can get this actually. Or guide on the edge. Anyway, I fly back because like she tries to contest me. Hawk sees that as an opportunity to chase the brig. Tries to kill the brig. Everybody's going on him. I don't know how the fuck Hawk still lives there, if you want me to be completely honest. Make me dies. I'm thinking about the rest, but then I remember I'm not going to go for insta guesses if people are rushing again. If Brig uses Rally and she's not on it's obvious that she's going to rush and if they're not going to take a lot of damage. I use Valk over here. And now I know that soldiers going to whenever you use your Valkyrie, you're a prime target for high noons and for soldier ultimates. So like if they use their ults, always take cover. So I'm using this to take cover and I'm wasting soldiers' time because of it. Then I go over here, I see the widow on top. Walk over here, Widow dropped around me, I wasn't paying attention to that. Get the hook, going for a rest, getting cover. Use the super jump to dodge the hook and to get to Orisa. I wanna try and get high ground with the super jump, heal up the pop. To miss my opportunity to get to Widow. Damage boost the Widow. Pocket the pop. I was thinking maybe I should pocket the pop a bit more, but I saw the lamp. Walk left, I'm afraid about the hook. Start the healing nonetheless. Use this as cover. Like you see, I'm not always looking at your Risa. Like I'm using the walls because you can hide around walls and then peek again on your beamed up target and the beam will still not break because like it breaks two seconds after you break line of sight. Line of sight meaning uh, what your eyes can see because if there's a wall in front of you, obviously you can't see your teammates or enemies in this case teammates he's going to go for a hook so i try to dodge it that's why like why i walked right side then then walk left dodge the hook another guy try and contest me i heal up the doom try to go to orisa i was thinking about the rest but then i went like nope i'm not gonna rest brig also coming to me like i'm more aware of things around me that can cancel my rest compared to yesterday he while i fly i heal up the doom fist over there that killed the soldier try to get to the moira to obtain high ground if i start the rest i'm gonna get slept or damage this is a very easy way to do damage to me i still have a uh, doom fist's body there so i'm going to use it to fly across otherwise i'm gonna see nine i'm going to use the pillow that's cover dodging the hook like Wait, I'm gonna play it in slow motion, because like one thing that a lot of people do is like they move to predictable. You need to think what the enemy is going to do in order to dodge, to like, what the enemy needs to do in order to stop you. So in this case, when I'm going to fly, it's obvious that they're all going to try to like stun me and damage me. So I know Hog is going to go for a hook, so I'm going to drop over here, and when I'm going to drop... I'm going to pick a direction and then I'm going to swap the direction when I feel like the hog is going to like stuck the hook. So like you see the hog over here looking at me, I'm going to walk over there and then I'm going to like swap directions. I'm going to stop going over there. If I would have pressed this a bit more, the hook would have connected. Then I hop over there back, get to the ball, use ball as cover. Try to dodge, heal up the ball a little bit. Use the hog as a slingshot, but I've missed it. Heal up the doom. Try to get the hog over there. And I would have had Valk. I should have probably been more conservative a little bit. Let the hog die. Because, like, hog was still on point, right? Yeah, hog was still... Hog? No, hog got boop. Eh, anyway. Even if I would have been conservative, it would have been a C9. I was thinking maybe I should have just waited and find my Valk. And not be that ballsy. But it would have been a C9 nonetheless. 
Okay, that was the first round. Let's check out the second one. Again, as I said, damage puts the weight of from long distance if there is no shield over there. Because, like, shield's going to break. Bash is gonna break the shield, and then Widow's gonna, like, gonna kill the tanks. By the way, a very important thing to note on this map is always check this corner. There's, like, if there are heroes that are going to have the opportunity to play from this, they're going to play from here. So, always be aware because they're very easy to get. And the way you can. See if they're actually playing from there is for New York players. You can actually see when they come over here. You can see through this window and they can't see you. Okay, so let's wind up over here. Like see Orisa's checking if people are over there. But there's one problem. Even if you don't see, like you saw Reaper's TP. If the Reaper would have been like a bit more cautious, he would have went over here and then TP'd over here. So like you can't see the TP going through, okay? So, like, a lot of people think that they're safe by doing sneaky strats, but you can actually see what they're doing. So, anyway, the tip is, when you're gonna attack, always check this to see if they're running with something, if they have Bastion comps, to, like, have a read on the thing comp before actually seeing it when the game starts. So, we walk out with Widow right side, damage boosts the Widow, Bastion breaks the shield, we get a headshot, be wary of the Reaper over there, kill them up. Reaper is still behind, see how I'm maintaining my distance, I'm not playing close to him, I'm maintaining my distance because Reaper has like a certain range in which he's effective, I'm playing outside of that range. Try to get to D.Va over there, heal her up, damage boost the Widow, when there's a shield place, damage boost the Bastion to break the shield even faster, then stay with Widow. Reaper is going to go over there, damage with the Widow, swap to heal to Bastion because he's going to be contested by Reaper, then try to pocket the Bastion. Was thinking about trying to get a guess off, guess didn't go through, and I was thinking about the C9. Like, I'm safe here. If they leave the payload, I can just try and go for a C9. If they don't leave the payload, I always have the buff over here to, to like, go to. Like, you see how I'm waiting, and they're not leaving the payload, so I have my teammates over there to get out. If they pull hook, I can just get away. Anyway. Bastion gets hooked. And now I recognize this again. I stuck the rest at the maximum range of it outside of the lamp and then I walk into the lamp and then I like uh, try and hopefully my tanks are going to walk in front and block for the rest. Which Orisa did and I was very impressed that she ate the sleep. For me that was very risky of my part. I just didn't want to like waste my time over there. Where was... How was Diana? Sh Wait, how did Diana sleep to Orisa actually? Ah, uh, she fired the sleep dart from here. Okay. But still, remember what I said? As in like walking in front and never hesitating? Because like they have a junk now. He can't interrupt my guess. Like he can only interrupt my guess with his mind. Um, and his trap. If he, he can, can he interrupt my guess with his trap? I actually don't know that. He can boop me off with his mind. Anyway, Hook can hook me. Hook was used. And he can push me with his whole hog. He doesn't have it. Or he has it, but he's not going to use it to cancel, I guess, from this distance. In this case. Or at least I'm not going to expect it. And... Um, also, we have Anna's sleep duct over here. That is, like, going to try and uh, cancel it. So, luckily for me, Orisa took the sleep duct. But then, like, I... Did an insta guess, then walked inside into cover. We go low, staying in the back, killing everybody up. I don't think I should have popped Valk here, but it saved Diva from getting demacked. So overall, I say it was an acceptable Valk. I wanna try and contest them a little bit. Try to force them their cooldowns. I, I know I'm not gonna kill them, but maybe I can force Bob's lamp, Anna sleep dark, Reaper's raid, Hog's hook. So I'm just poking. Bob throws the lamp exactly what I want, and now I'm going to get out. Like I forced something with the Valk. I kept the diva uh, into the mech, and also I like uh, forced the lamp out. Because now, when we go in and we use window, guess what happens? They don't have a lamp. They all group up around here and Bob doesn't have a lamp. 
It's very important to understand that whenever you're doing things in Overwatch and in general with whatever you're doing, your goal is even if you can't get like the end result, you can't get the kills, you can't win the team fight, you are going to you try to get as much as you possibly can. I tried to like um I tried to like force his cooldown in my Val because that that's the maximum I could have gotten there. There was no way I would get a kill. And now a hog died because they didn't have a lamp to hide around this corner. So like everything you do in the game matters, although it doesn't seem like it matters. When they're anti, swap to damage boost, no point in healing them. Stay in cover, guard myself, heal up the pup. Riptire goes through, we don't have lamp, because like they just destroyed it. And I'm not going to be in the open, so I'm going to use this as cover, going to stop the beam connection so it doesn't go after me, it goes after Bop. And now I'm debating if I rest my Bop or Bastion. If I rest my Bop, we're gonna have consistent amount of damage, but we have Bastion ultimate, and I think my heals are going to be enough to like win the team fight. Because I, I know that they're too down, or I died and Junk died. So I decide to rest the Bastion, and that was the great call, because Bastion's going to ult, and going to kill the Bop. Going to kill the hog, going to kill Diana, and we clean the team fight. Keep the bop up alive. I'm playing way too close to my team, by the way. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm playing still way too close to my team. I have Valk, I'm gonna pop Valk because I feel like there's a lot of pressure. This lamp was very good, like they can't destroy it. Because like it's around this, they can only destroy it from right side and Sigma is the only one shooting at it, so it's going to take some time. So that's like why I'm damage boosting instead of healing. And then I'm going to stop to heal when the lamp's going to break. Now damage boost because everybody's full. And I'm just going to maintain my distance. Call out, Reaper TP in the back, my team reacts instantly. They hear him, maybe even hear the call out. Make sure that my Bastion's alive. And damage boost him so he melts to everybody. Try to help Widow with destroying the lamp over there. No one Heal up the Widow. Nothing too important here. Just literal survivability. Constantly moving back and forth and back and forth. Because like, if you have the opportunity of staying in one spot compared to like moving constantly, it's better to like move constantly. You know? Like you're more annoying. Because it's like this. Like, do you like this chat? If you, this is like why Bop is very strong and I love playing Bop and I love playing a lot of heroes that have a ton of mobility. If let's say... You have the option of moving from here to here or standing still and both have the same consequences in your gameplay as in you are going to achieve the same thing by doing both things. For the enemy it's more annoying to be more unpredictable with your movement. Why? Because if you play from here for people that don't understand why you need to move constantly, if you play from here the enemy is going to go like, bro, Marx is over there. Let's just dive the Marx over there. So that's like why you need to move left and right and left and right and left and right. Back and forth. Bop asks for help, so very good call out. Kill up the Bop. Stop the Widow. I'm very close to my team again, I don't want to be this close, I need to be more passive. Interesting things are not happening here, this is why I'm playing it in 2 times speed. Just literally damage boost, damage boost. Kill him up. Damage boost now very important. When I go for a rest, I remember that maze I remember that they had a May, because you know that earlier I got a rest off on another map, or maybe it was on this map previously. I can't even remember if they had a May. No, it was on in a previous game. And when she goes in for a rest, I know she's going to try to destroy it with the wall and she's going to try to damage me. So I'm going to start the rest in cover a bit in the open and then I'm going to get in cover. So like now she can't headshot me and she can only cancel it with the wall. She uses the wall, but this is the important part about rest chat. You only need LOS of the hero you're resting at the beginning of the rest. You do not need to maintain LOS while you do it. Nine months all okay, so always keep that in mind. Get the rest off, then I Valk to get out of there, because I hear the rip tire and And with Mercy, a cool way to like deny grip tire is just going up straight in the air. So like he can't climb. Of course, when he goes straight up in the air, don't go close to a wall because he can like try to go on top of the wall and bounce it off onto you. So go in the middle like this. But when you do it, be wary of what the enemy team has. Because like if they have a widow, be careful where you fly because you're gonna die. We have the passion. We die. We lose this fight. We get out. 
Now my priority swaps from damage boosting the Widow to damage boosting the Farah. Why? Because we don't have a lot of characters that can destroy the shield. We don't have a Bastion anymore. And Widow's probably going to stay and shoot the shields. But if I swapped and like stay with the Farah that doesn't have any clear context in the enemy apart from Bob that can like um, try to take her down from the sky reliably. She, he can't do that properly if there's like a mercy damage boosting and like healing up the Farah. So I swap the focus from Widow pocket to Farah pocket. The tanks are being taken care of my bop. By the way, that's not an excuse for people that go like in silver. Yeah, I watched the, the, the Smoxy guide and the dude said that if I have a bop and he's taking care of the tanks, uh, if, he, if I have a bop, he's going to take care of the tanks. That's a general rule of what they should be doing. If my bop would be full DPS Pepega mode and not give a fuck about the tanks, of course I would pay attention to my tanks. But it's safe to assume that Moira's going to heal your tanks, Bob's going to heal your tanks. If not, you're gonna need to focus more on staying with your team and ignore pocketing DPSs this much. So I'm just flying around, not that important of a movement. I called out some ultimates, not going to go into them. Just damage boost everybody. Stay with the Faga. Mayul comes through, I'm staying up in the air, making sure that I can see everybody that's going to be low. Faga is going to go for an ult, and when she goes in for an ult, this is something that I learned, and I want to talk to you about. Actually, not this ultimate, it was another ultimate. Okay, let's continue with this. What the fuck? When she ults, I'm going to try and walk in front of her to block some of the incoming damage. No damage went through on me, but the intention was there. I was a bit too slow. Use Val just to secure this, because like we're not gonna have another fight. And we cap. Now, this is where things get interesting. Damage boost the win in the beginning. And then, because maybe she gets a pick and then swap to Faga. The enemy team is running with six people holding over here. We have a flank over here, flank over here. We stay there. We luckily get a pick, but Farah dies as well, so we can't rush in instantly. I'm going in for a rest using the payload as cover. We, I hear that the Bob wants to use the lamp. Very good lamp placement, I think. Now, they can't just destroy the lamp, but this is diamond, so people don't know. People in diamond and platinum, silver and bronze and gold, you can shoot the lamp through this, you can shoot through these trees. Okay, so always, you're not safe if you're over here. So, I know that I don't want to risk it and rush them face forward, because they have a Symmetra with a lot of turrets, they can rock us, they, they literally are everybody shooting at us in the same spot. And in a 6 vs 16 fight with both teams over here, their buff can also hide lamp better than our buff in this case just because of how the map is. They will clearly defeat us. They have a Bastion, we don't have a Bastion. We have bugs damage heals, but like with slower fire rates. Bastion is just going to... We're just going... We're just doing an interesting thing by going in for a cheeky angle instead of like staying... I like this music. Anyway. So I notice this, and then say Farah go left, so like, we just sandwich them. And like, them instead of shooting us from over here, they're attacked from multiple angles. You can do this reliably in rank, people will usually understand. If they don't understand, you can do it by yourself, but if you're playing Mercy, you can't do it kind of like by yourself. Almost at all. If you're playing any other hero, like for example, any other he any other hero such as tank or DPS, then your team doesn't need you, because like, if you're playing Moira, and you have a Zen, Moira Zen, of course you can't go and flank with Moira, it's about how effective you are with your damage. If you have a Bop and an Ana, of course you can look for a flank to nade them over here. Like all the time when you do flanks like this, you need to keep into consideration as a healer, because like we're doing going to GM as a healer, uh, always need to take into consideration if your team actually needs your healing. In this case, we had Bob to cover for the healing, so I that's why like I it was safe for me to leave this and do this. And in case you're wondering, this is why like, the term suffocation exists, and I like not why the term suffocation exists. Why I use suffocation? Let's look for example at Dirk Bob and how he saw this team fight in the beginning, because like Bob's playing in a perfect position over here, so he's all safe, has lamp, has everything. Throws the lamp, we can't destroy the lamp, just heal, what? I'm gonna squeak it after. And then, suddenly, lamp breaks, shield breaks, and now look at this. Everybody's like still in front, and then now we get shot from everywhere. What the fuck do we do? What the fuck do I do? You know? 
that's what you gotta do. Chat me to interrupt the broadcast for a very important announcement. Somebody give him the Pachimagi squeak points. Here you go. There's the squeak. So yeah. Like literally this is like where why you sometimes feel suffocated with space. By the way. Interesting idea with the Symmetra to get out though. So I realized this opportunity, call it out, we go on a flank. <clears throat> Now, I see that Farah's going over there, I don't want to go with her personally, because like I think that that's a bit too deep, so I want to try and go up on top to the Widow that's going to peek, going to use the Orisa as a slingshot, as like you shift to her, and at the end of the shift you press space to continue your momentum, and then I'm going to go to the Widow, damage plus the Widow, and then I realize Farah's plan, I press tab, I see she has ults, and I know she wants to sneak behind them and go for an ult, which is very smart. When she does that, I'm trying to tell the D.Va to, de to use defense matrix for her, and I'm going to try to body block for her. So I realize that, heal up the Widow, ask for it, and then when she goes in, I'm trying to walk in front, swap to heal for... should have swapped to damage boost and then to heal, to be honest. Now I swap to damage boost, she gets a lot of kills, I try to walk in front of her, I take a little bit of damage, but still not that much, but maybe it was enough for like Farah to like secure these kills. Then... We win the team fight, and now I'm thinking, should I use rest? No, I'm not gonna use rest because the enemy team is going to like respawn in 10 seconds. Maybe they're going to wall like back out, and maybe like they're going to get an insta kill here at five seconds up until I'm going to have my rest, and I don't have my rest instantly. So I'm not going to go for a rest because Farah spawn is close to us, the enemies are not nearby. I'm saving my 30 second cooldown. We're all waiting over here, but. This is something very important, chat, and this is something that I actually never did before in the game. And I actually wanted to try it out with Mercy, okay? So be very aware of this. A very common strategy with Sigma is like to try and use your his ultimate. You're gonna see when he's gonna get it. This team fight, he's not gonna get it, I think. I'm gonna explain when he gets it. I misread the team fight. I remember his Pepega. Whenever you're pushing like this and you have ult advantage, because like they swap their team comp, the safe, like, I know that you're gonna go like perfect ult economy. Bro, if you're in diamond, the second you have your goals, know, just press Q really if you're well pushing in overtime. High, okay? Feel like I'm playing poorly in scripts. Any ideas? So like I we had our ultimates, I pop I pop them I say to pop them instantly. We use window, we use Valk, just fly around, they have a widow, so I'm more wary of the widow. I'm more careful of where she is. I asked for pull diva bomb non-stop, but maybe my teammates don't know what that means, and that's okay. As in diva pull, if diva throws her bomb, then Orisa pulls where they're going to cover, but that's okay. So like I still ask for things, and maybe they happen, maybe they don't happen. Still, the intention is there. I'm still trying to give out comps. Remember yesterday I didn't talk at all? Right now I'm like I'm trying to add this to my um, hero. Rates, so to say. Wait, 5 versus 5. I don't want to guess the Widow yet. The fight is still going on. I'm not even thinking about guessing. I still know we have Diva Bomb. Diva goes for a cheeky Diva Bomb over there. And I see that Sigma's flanking behind. And remember this call out? We get a kill onto the May. And then I go Sigma behind, Sigma behind, Sigma behind, Sigma behind, Sigma behind. And like we all like try and turn around to Sigma. Farah focuses the Sigma. Uh, Diva focuses the Sigma. And now the important part, chat when you're pushing in overtime or, or like it's the last point Sigma's going to ult the payload always assume it stay outside of Sigma's ultimate range and then shift to the target that he's going to lift from the payload okay so let's see from this point of view like I, I could see the C9 with my eyes like I know that the second he ults he's going to ult the payload so the second Orisa gets lifted up, I'm going to shift. So I shift and the overtime doesn't tick. She uses Fortify anyway and Farah's over here, but I'm happy that I tested it out and that that's actually something that you can do with Mercy. So if you're playing with Mercy and Sigma lifts people up, you can actually counter his forced Sigma 9. Just play around the box, there's nothing too complicated, that's why I'm speeding this up. Yeah. 
Still nothing too interesting. Doomfist is going to go there. He's going to go for his loot, so I'm trying to get to him. I can't fly to him, so I'm using Diva as an anchor point a little bit. You saw there. Trying to heal up the Doom. Thinking about getting to him, but he's going to get to me. Fly back. Trying to look for Farah. She has ult, and now where I think I could have fucked it, I, I fucked it up. One, I valked way too early. But this is something that I today I don't want to work on. Today I want to work on getting races and protecting my other healers. So bad valks, preemptive valks, is something that I don't want to do. Because we had the window up. It's obvious that they're not going to peek. There was no reason for me to valk here. Absolutely no reason. Maybe when we would all get lower, stuff like that. No reason. Because now I'm using the valk. Now I should pop the Valk. Right now I should pop the Valk. And I, like for me, my Valk ends now. No problem though. But now I could still have my Valk. So, when I go, remember like Anna, Farah called out that Anna was one. Now I would have been still, now I would still have my Valk. And I would be able to turn around and kill Diana in my Valk. And maybe we would have swung, swung the, we would have turned around the tides of the fight. But, one thing that I actually never thought about. When Farah is ulting and are, there are multiple people like at multiple angles trying to shoot her, I need to try and body block not any incoming source of damage, but the source of damage that can stun or like cancel or like try and kill her the easiest. In this case, a Zen headshot, I can just heal them up. Like even if I walk in front, it's like not gonna kill the Farah that easily. So if I have to pick between Zen and Ana, I'm probably going to try and body block for um for like Anna's sleepwork stuff but still let's say that this was in the heat of the moment like see I walk over here but like when I fly I don't even know who Farah is shooting at like I need to put myself inside the brain of Farah and see who she's going to ult. like I see she's going to ult the Zen but I don't look around me like this is I can look around me and I don't do that when I fly you know what I mean? As in, I can just fly and spin my, mount, my mouse around and look around me. That's something that I need to get used to. So like, literally using GA and looking around. That's what I need to get used to. Because I don't do that. I'm like very limited in my movement. Like, look here. We continue. And now imagine if I fly and I just look around. I just look at Farah. I just look at Farah and I don't analyze the battlefield. Because in the heat of the moment, I would have thought, if I would have seen the animal, I would have went like, I need to block the sleep. Or I need to block the nade. And now, the nade fucked us over. Because right now, imagine if I would have been here. Anna turns around, or like I drop even lower to Anna. The nade goes on me, I tank the nade. Because like the nade fucked us up. I fly to the Farah, try to body block for the Zen over here. Anna turns around, doesn't have sleep, but nades the Farah. If I would have been here, I would have blocked the nade, maybe Fa and Farah would have killed the Anna. I would have probably died, but she would have killed Diana. And you don't know how the ties of the fight turned around afterwards. And second to that, remember, I would have had Valk up if I would have been more conservative with it and not pop it that early in the fight. So I would have killed Diana. I would have lived. Because, like, now I don't have Valk. Like, see, I don't have Valk. I need to get to them like this. I could have killed Diana, then fly to Diva, get out, continue the fight. We didn't push this just because of me, of my early Valk. Okay? So, like... This is like why reviews are so important, like a lot of you when you do reviews you're gonna go like bro we pushed like almost with 1 minute and 15 seconds we almost push, pushed it till the end of the map like it was a good push no, You can always play better You can always play better So yeah, if I would have lived, I think we would have won the team fight. Afterwards Two big mistakes One, when I go in and try to body block for far, I need to think while I'm body blocking All, all I'm thinking is bro I just want to body block No, what am I trying to body block? Because if I have the option of body blocking, I don't know, a Brig and a Nana, then of course I'm going, if Farah's at the range where Brig can't stun the Farah, that is, like she's in the air. Of course I'm going to body block Anna's shots, sleeps, nades, and I'm not going to body block Brig's flail, because she can't move Farah when she's ulting. And now with the defense. A cool defense, maybe you play in teams, maybe you get your team to talk with you in ranked. A cool defense, very easy to pull off and I think it's very easy win is literally have your tanks sitting around the payload or inside this house over here because Bob can hide the mortality field around this or even around the tree a little bit. Like have your tanks sit over here and fly with Farah Mercy around this wall over here above. Just poke them down, they can't even touch the payload. It's a very easy strategy. My team doesn't understand that. 
they probably don't know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to like give out signals by shooting, talking and stuff, but that's okay. I don't get frustrated. There's no reason to get frustrated because they probably haven't seen it before and it's in the heat of the moment and I don't know how to explain it better. So it's, it's your fault when you can't make your teammates understand what you want them to do if they want to listen to you. And my teammates really knew what... Like, they really... It feels like we were playing as a team, you know? Like, they, they actually cared about callouts and stuff. But in this case, I couldn't explain properly. So it was my fault that I couldn't explain properly. I couldn't find my words. I should have said it in a simpler manner. Anyway, we stay behind. Gun far up, pocket the far up. They don't have... They have McCree, so when I, whenever I'm flying, I'm flying up, but then I know that I can, like, drop instantly and try to shift down. I'm trying to, like, provoke the McCree to shoot me a little bit. You're gonna see that the higher I'm going to go up, go up in rank, the least amount of time, the, like the, I'm going to spend time in air uh, less than I do in right now. You know, like right now I'm, I can be like full pepega fly around the air. I don't trust the game. When I'm going to climb up in a sar, I'm gonna trust the game. I'm gonna respect it a little bit more, even if it's just a McCree. Like a good McCree in Tau 500, if I fly up like that, headshot, headshot, I'm dead. I can't fly like that. But in Diamond, I can get away with it. And some people, this is like something that. Whenever you're learning, you're trying to you're trying to do things that top 500 players are doing or pro players are doing in your plat games. When your widow can barely hold her mouse in her hand, you know, like always play around what the limitations adapt to what the enemy is capable of doing. If of course there's a silver McCree and you play Farah Mercy, that's free elo. If the McCree has good aim, swap whatever. Go adapt your playstyle. Play more around walls. Cause like a lot of you will go like, bro. I watch a, a sick McCree player, I want to learn Mercy, I'm not going to fly like that up in the air, I'm silver, but the McCree silver is going to pop my head. So understand and play to your team's weaknesses. You know how it is to understand that, then you need to adjust to this. If the enemy doesn't have a dedicated hit scan player, they have a, a May one trick and a Tracer one trick, your brain will go like, Farah Mercy, right? Because they don't have a hit scan, they, don't, they never stop the hit scan. Right, and they, whatever, they have Orisa, they have Brick that can do shit to Farah, or Moira can do shit to Farah, apart, apart from her ultimate, and your brain goes like, Farah Mercy, you know, and you, you win that, but sometimes you only do that for heroes, you don't do that for the players you're playing against. Maybe someday the players are tired when you play with the same people over and over in top 500 games. Maybe, you know, that if you play pro, you know that some players struggle on some maps. You feel them when they choke. They have like certain patterns when they choke. They stop positioning themselves properly. Like, you need to get in their heads a little bit. And you can always test the waters with Muxy. Muxy is a very good character at testing the aim of the enemy. Because if you fly up in the air in the beginning and you GA like a fucking Pepega non-stop, all the time, in the air, in the air, in the, in the air. And you see that McCree can his, can misses like two, uh, 20 bullets on you. Of course you're gonna abuse that. Like, of course you're gonna abuse that. Understand what your teammates and your enemies are capable of and adapt your playstyle to that. Because in this case, there's no way I can I could have like survived in the air against a, a McCree and a Nana in top 500. No way I could have survived there flying like that. Right here also. I know it sounds like when I flew like that before, like I know also, if McCree is smart, look at the McCree. If this is a top 500 McCree, McCree headshot, headshot, look, let's see. Literally I'm top left, no shield, no nothing, 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 now looks at me. That wasn't a headshot, that was a, that was a miss shot and a body shot. And when I started to get damage, I always try and take cover. So like you can test the water, like I'm not saying go straight up in the air and exist there and go like, hey, hey, bitches. No, don't, don't do that non-stop because you're going to get punished eventually. He's going to have his aim. Do it, but do it in a more cheeky manner. Like, I bet you can touch me. And then if he touches you, then you fly to somebody or get into cover. So always juggle around that, okay? <laughs> Also, look at this, it's like you need to understand, you need to play the game. Some of you are unaware of what the plans of the enemy is, you need to be in their head. If you see the hawk coming at you right now in slow motion, you, you hear his footsteps, like you see me reacting to this, he's obviously, obviously going to try to hook me. And then he realizes that he's out of range of the hook, because I start walking backwards. Some of you are unaware of what's happening around you. If you see, a, if you see for example, a basic example, if you see a reaper over here, no TP, 
has shift though, but he TP'd over here. Don't be afraid of him. His effective area is like this, you know, when he where he does a lot of damage. You can just kite back and waste his time. And now Hog recognizes that. I am aware that he's going to go for a hook. I fly over there, try to heal in case he misses. He doesn't miss. But now I know that the hook was used. I have lamp. And I'm waiting a little bit with this because although Hog used his hook, he can always vape a little bit to heal up and to um, just literally double shoot me. Like literally walk in, in me and shoot my ass. He's going to die, but he's going to get two picks with him. But I realize that McCree is coming and I use my teammates. Like also you need to think what your teammates are going to do. So normally I would go for an insta guess here, but I see with the corner of my eye that McCree is coming. So I stop from going in for this, and what the, what will make it do? Flashbang, flashbang headshot because he's low. Go in, goes for a flashbang. I expect the flashbang. I get the guess, gets the kill. Easy grab. After I get the rest on Faga, I usually expect the fire to go straight up. This wasn't the case, so it almost fucked me up. I Less need to three. adapt to what players do in every great thing. Go with Farah, like see I, only, I fly to her but I always have cover when I do so, like I'm never in the open. Drop, we win this. This is just style points, the fight was won, that's why I can pull out my pistol. Last fight. I think I valked early as well, but still, even if we kill them, it takes them 10 seconds to die, 10 seconds to respawn, 10 seconds to walk back, they're gonna engage in overtime. I should have valked probably a little bit later, or keep the valk and just use Bongo initially. I'm valking way too aggressive, but there's one thing why I tend to valk aggressive. With other, way too early I mean, with other supports that I played with Ana, with Bob, and with Moira, I was using my ult before the fight even started because I noticed that players lack the confidence to have the initiative to start the team fight. And if I pop Valk, I associate that with go in. But Mercy's Valk is not like that. I feel like it's not working like that. I feel like it's more of a in case shit goes down and we lose pressure, then we Valk. Of course, sometimes you want to engage with it. But I feel like the more I'm going to play Mercy, the more I'm going to start the Valk a little bit later in the fight. We killed the Orisa, start to go for the lures. I'm not afraid, I tested the waters, Mekri is not gonna tap me, oh I don't trust the hook, the, the hook that's going to land the hook, just go in, give a bomb there. Right now when I contest the hook, I go in the air, try to dodge his hook, even if I get hooked, Diva can DM for me, so I'm safe. Go to Farah, go over here, and the last tip for this game is when I fly over here, I don't start the beam connection onto the Farah because you can hear the beam, they're gonna walk out and maybe they're going to look at her. I'm just flying around using my angelic descent, so I'm pressing space bug to not drop instantly because when also when you're shifting, you're making sound, you know, like you make that spe specific GA sound. So I'm just gliding over there, careful not to get out of range, I was afraid she was going to drop, now I go in. And when I feel like she's going to drop, I'm going to instantly start to beam her up. So I hope you learned a thing or two from this. They eventually see 9 but still. I hope you learned a thing or two from this. For me, this game, uh, this game represented the fact that my races are getting better. I'm trying to get into cover more. I am still kind of pepega with the Valk sometimes. Sometimes I heal when I should be damage boosting, so I'm not adjusting, not, not using her resources at the ma at her maximum potential. Sometimes as well I'm playing too close to my team, but again, my main problem today, my main focus today is trying to get aggressors off, which I did. Like, I got cover, I'm proud of the fact that I used, understood the CCs that I had. And also another thing that I learned and I wasn't aware of, whenever I wanted body block for a far, I need to be aware of what type of body block I'm going for. So that's something that I also, also learned. Oh, the video ended. How lucky for us. Do I have a proposition? proposition. For you. If you enjoyed the video. Hello? Okay, it works. So where was I? If you enjoyed the video... <laughs>
<laughs> make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to be notified when we upload a new video, you can click the bell down below. Also, you know, we live stream on Twitch. So if you want to catch me live, it's at twitch.tv slash ML7 support. If you want to check out our social media, it has a lot of cute Olaf pictures over there. He's so sleepy. He doesn't want to turn around to say hello to you guys. He's very good. You can check out Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to join our Discord community, guess what? We also have a server for that. With this being said, I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day or night and take care.